Hello and welcome to Edikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss current affairs and gazette for today, 7th of February 2022. Before we welcome, uh, before we begin this discussion, let me quickly welcome all the participants here. Uh, we have Hima, Kriti, Bhavani, Netra, Hello, welcome to Anonymous, Ravi, Pooja, Ashish, good evening and all the other people joining in late or maybe watching later. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to uh, the discussion for today. A very interesting discussion for today going to NCU. Before that, I'd like to appreciate uh, uh, the works of some of you. Commendable work at your end. Some of you, especially Hima and uh, Kriti. Really good. The kind of points you're putting, not only the points, but along with that, if you have examples or data, it, it actually brings to life that the particular aspect of uh, uh, you know that, that you're speaking of so each of it is uh, really good good evening puja online study study good evening to you right so uh, it's it's great it's great and in fact uh, uh, this quote is for each of you who is putting that effort be so good they can't ignore you be it your uh, relatives people who are looking up to you or people who you know uh, are aspiring to become like you or something that you're doing that is so good that nobody is able to ignore you even your answers they get reflected we do not know each other we have not known each other through uh, you know our faces or interaction but we know each other through our answers that we write right our names are merely attached to what we speak so i really commend the effort of each of you who are participating in this people viewing offline must as well participate this will show the kind of dedication you have this is a free initiative to everybody towards everybody or agar, if you're able to utilize these initiatives, then only you are capable enough to join a paid course. No, otherwise in the paid course also, you would be putting in money, but you'd not be utilizing it. So why not start with these kind of courses and be so good, nobody can ignore you then, right? So uh, let's start with the conversations. What do we have in the daily UPSC current affairs for yourself? All right, hello, online study. So, uh, we have the snapshot section, three updates for you. The first one is from draft Ministry of Education, draft National Higher Education Qualification Framework. Why in news and what is the news? Both of it to be covered here. The second one is duty changes in the budget. Why so? Do tariff raise somewhere and tariff decrease somewhere? The DLI scheme, Design Link Incentive Scheme, this day in history dedicated to wife of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Behind every man's success lies a female. Featured news for today is on interlinking of rivers. And we will understand today exactly what you have mentioned uh, in your comment section. We will understand what has been the need for interlinking of rivers. What are the proposals? What are the issues associated? The advantages and how should we go about these kind of projects in the future? Image of the day is on uh, uh, perfectly preserved flowers. We'll see that image. Terms, Satras, Polavata. The Graphene Innovation and the Security, all of them in news lately. Three editorials that we have. The first one is Space Race amongst all the countries. The second one is on power, a new, uh, you know, initiative again for, uh, uh, for revamping the power distribution sector. Government has passed on, uh, more than a lakh crore on this. And then uh, we have uh, uh, regulatory, yes, self-regulation of the uh, uh, digital medias, self-regulation of digital media. Today's case study is on uh, women from Gujarat, especially in Kutch area. All right, so let's begin this conversation. The first uh, news for today is on the higher education qualification framework. Now, why has this been asked? See, uh, the first thing that we want to look at every news is why is it in news? The content, the content itself is the facts, mere facts, and they will keep changing. They might keep changing. But why have they asked a question like this? Or why is it uh, relevant? Why have we put it here? The prime thing that you should look at from uh, the perspective of preparation of exam is that firstly, this directly links to our syllabus. So paper two, education, paper one, society, all of them directly linking and also governance, governance of uh, the higher education, right? So UGC, right? So these directly link to the syllabus. This is one thing. The second important thing is why, why a topic like this is in news is because we want to look at revamping the higher education in India specifically because the enrollment ratio in India is around 27% in higher education that means 
students who are of the eligible age only 27 percent of them are in the higher education right now they have been enrolled into colleges but this number has been increasing all the time it has been increasing india wants to make its its education sector especially tertiary education sector more competitive why should students go abroad they should be here itself and to do that we need better education better education framework in the country better edu education framework and for that we need a qualification framework so this will not only standardize the uh, education levels in all the various colleges this will also set a baseline below which the education will not be imparted in higher education right so this is why in news you should be able to relate to this article when you know a little about national education policy even if you don't know we will understand this in this article itself right so ministry of uh, education has uh, released a draft national higher education qualification framework this is the news all right so when you look at something that i have uh, brought in from outside see have a look it says around 4 crore 3.7 crore crore students have enrolled in colleges in 2018 and 19 and this stood at 3.85 crores in the next year this will definitely cross 4 crores in the coming years very very soon in fact it will cross a very good number but only 4 crore students in colleges out of the 135 crore population is it not too less absolutely but with the forthcoming education policy in the, the by the government there will be more students who will be participating in the higher education and this number is definitely set to increase right now the eligible uh, percentage uh, the gross enrollment ratio uh, in higher education is 26 percent 27 percent it was 26 earlier and it was 24 even earlier so with more students incoming we need to standardize education we need to impart quality education and there are frameworks there are frameworks times times has has its own framework niti aayog has its own framework there are other international bodies they have framework to rate the colleges right in india but then if if we have to have a standard system this must be done under ugc this must be done by the ministry itself right so for example nirf when I, nirf ranks the colleges in india it has five parameters teaching research professionals gradu graduation outcomes outreach inclusivity and perception how it is perceived abroad right for example the education in india is not perceived in the best of light when we look at uh, uh, the people who rate indian education from abroad right whereas we rate the education in colleges like mit harvard as excellent that that is the perception that i'm speaking of the perception that we have is not so great in our own country right so if we have to do this we have to standardize the parameters on which we rate education we also have to standardize uh, students learning outcome and this is what has been released in the uh, framework lately right okay so this is a part of national education policy nep 2020 few important things that must be in your mind when you when you look at nep is abc abc straight academic bank of credit right this offers flexibility to the stu students blended education is the word blended education do remember these two words very important words blended education and abc academic bank of credit what happens here is if I am studying in a college in the first year and I want to switch to another college in the second year just because my father was a government servant and he shifted to another city. This is possible now on. This is, hap this is possible because of uh, credits that I get in every year of my studies. First year I will get 5 credits and I can switch to the other college as well and study rest of the 2 years of gradu uh, graduation there. Right? So this is academic bank of credit and this will be placed at a centralized place for all the students. Right. Uh, not not only dependent on the university but this will be for everybody throughout the country they will also be offering blended education that means this is a blended system itself right one college and another college another blending form is when uh, there is a mix of offline and online education another component of national education policy is the assessment framework exams will not be held the way they are being held right now they will not be devils anymore open book tests will be organized discussions will be organized so test pattern will also completely change there will be more linkage to employability how employability employability this is uh, one key component 
of uh, the national education policy 2020 right so through this the idea is to check the skill level of the students right so word the word to be used here the for skill employability is the uh, uh, the word here is uh, a student i'll i'll come up with that word that's a very very beautiful word to use it's about uh, uh, yes outcome learning outcome that is the word learning outcome determines the employability of the student for example in class 5 they should be the student should be able to read basic english should be able to understand mathematical problems simple addition and subtraction and their multiplications simple ones these are the learning outcomes they will be checked and standardized at all college le levels for simple simplification of this let me give you an example not only a student will be checked but the college as well for example uh, every college will be given a rating or every degree will be given a rating from 5 to 10 5 will stand for the first year of graduation and 10 will be the kind of degree which is being given to a student when they complete a specialized education right but then this will be rating for the college right 10 giving a specialized education five first year of graduation standardization of the course but to be able to you know how what is the level of expertise here this will be another part under pointer number 10 so there will be a standardization no under this uh, system this is also a part of the new framework right this is only been proposed right now but it will also come into action because it is a part of national education uh, policy 2020 and government has started to fund it in all the various uh, budgets it has started to fund it so this is where you should remember that uh, uh, the present what is required is spending of 6% of gdp by the public institutions in education and the spending is less than 3% right now now please remember this the objective is not to spread uniform education uniform curriculum is not the agenda but to set a benchmark a benchmark below that threshold education will not be imparted for example a student must face practical exams a student should have the flexibility to switch colleges if a student is not able to pursue four year complete course they should have an option to get out and get a degree or diploma at the end of two years as well now these these kind of flexibility should be available in all tertiary education institutions this is the point all right so this is why this new framework has uh, come into life see as i mentioned level 5 to level 10 for students and for rating of the colleges right and uh, below that will be for school education right at every level students will be assessed based on various parameters like knowledge understanding cognitive technical skills application of the knowledge this is the requirement okay this is a beautiful one so uh first one one important part of this new framework will be that a student will get an option to choose a stream twice twice for example if i choose science if i choose science science will be awarded to me at two levels of proficiency basic level and advanced level if after basic level i want to shift back to commerce saying oh it is too tough for me i can shift but right now if i have chosen science at class 11 there is no turning back right there is very less turning back people do switch after class 12 also right people do switch but uh, yes the, we are talking of the college education and the student should have the choice of getting back right so this is one multiple streams then multilingual see as i mentioned it need not be only uniform for everybody three language policy has to be maintained and the uh, education must be provided in mother tongue mother tongue uh, mostly up to up to class 8 right bagless days what is a bagless day a student need not carry the bag all the time around the year right so there there should be some days in which experiential learning should be a part of their school grooming experiential learning they should learn by tasting uh, the apple right or apricot they must be able to participate in practicals uh, and not only carry bags to school right this is a part of it and then four year bachelor degree has been proposed and they have the option of dropping out as well all right t cap a cap on total fees and going global what is a global global means globally and local right so faculties could be invited from abroad this is one but uh, they should also blend into understand the local requirements and uh, needs in our own country right so this is a part of the 
national education policies draft new proposal for uh, the qualification framework right tertiary education so what did i provide to you before getting in you should look at what did you gain from this article a deck right so in first article important article did you get some keywords yes we got some keywords from national education policy blended abc uh, right assessment framework uh, did we get some data yes we know that the that in primary education there is a gross enrollment ratio of more than 100 percent primary education school may when they get admitted students get admitted there is more than 100 percent proportion of students getting in how come because they are not only from this age gap they're also from age gap above this they get into it but if you look at tertiary it is hardly 30 percent 27 percent we saw that today so you got some data from here right did you get some analysis yes you got an analysis about the flexibility of the education that we are going to provide here in india you also understood an important thing that we will be dependent more on the uh, outcome not only output the difference between output and output outcome is very simple output is degree Kalia class 10th, we got the degree. Kalia class 12th, okay, mil ya, mithai ho gai. This is the output. But outcome, are, they don't know basic calculus. They don't, they don't, they, they can't even spell out what is the third law of Newton, right? Or third law of motion. So, this is the outcome. If you are able to do it, this is the outcome, even if we don't have the degree. This is the outcome, right? So, outcome will be assessed more right now. Did we get this analysis? Yes, this was the analysis. Examples? Examples from Indian universities and abroad can be also given here, right? So, this is the first uh, update. Now, now when when you look at, put this, put this, uh, you know, update from your end, when you make notes in education, right? In education, in society, segment of your books. And when we have further updates, put it just below this. So that all the content is placed at the same place and it is very easy for you to remember. So, did I derive some of the da data that I have used here from this, this uh, reading itself? No. I read it. I had read it multiple times. We have shared multiple times gross en enrollment ratio of the tertiary edu education multiple times. So, when you look at an article like this, you will also start to revise it ev every time. All right. See, Anonymous has just spoken SDG 4. Great. Very good. Right. Meditation as a form of learning, all right. Cleanliness as happening in schools in Japan. Good example, Ravi. Thank you. Snapshot to import duty changes in the budget 2022. So, madam, when she spoke of the changes on duty structure, she mentioned that there will be some segments where there will be increase in the tariff and there will be some segments where there will be decrease in tariff. This is a two-pronged method to ensure uh, these, the... the welfare of our country right so when we speak of art nirbhar bharat those sectors which have been getting incentives to import more right there has been a reason for that till now what has been the reason we lack those instruments devices raw material capital goods we lacked it earlier but now if we have started to build in india make in india or make for the world that means we will be competing with those goods which we are importing to India. And now, ma'am says that we will not be competing anymore because we will be raising the tariffs on those goods. Raising the tariffs. What are the examples? Examples are those kind of capital goods now which we are already creating. Earlier, if, if brick manufacturing, uh, industry, capital goods we were importing, now we will not import that because we are creating them in our country. Right? Simple example is chip designing. Earlier, we would be giving incentives for greater import. Now, we are only going to create. So, uh, the tariffs will be raised here. Similarly, tariffs will be reduced at certain places. Certain critical goods which are not available in our country and yet we require them. Right? So, those tariff changes will happen in this coming year. This is a, this is a flexible approach that the government has uh, you know, adopted in these times. So, remember the agility approach, this is a part of that agility approach. Yes, World Trade Organization will have its objections. Okay, we will respond to it then, right? Not only India, but many other countries are also protectionist in the nature. No, in the form of giving inputs to that complete industry, giving subsidies to the complete industry or the person, uh, you know, specific in that specific segment of industry. What all, right? We have got... Uh, the solar panel industry of USA, right? We have got uh, textile in Chinese, what not? Everything has been subsidized to make the trade more favorable for that country. 
right so india is also doing the same all right so this is what uh, is in news so exemptions have been rationalized on implements and tools for agriculture sector which are manufactured in india so uh, earlier when india had followed the protectionist policy of those old times 30 years back we used to tariff we used to tax at 150 percent 400 percent right so these are not for thin goods thin goods are those goods which are very costly which are only for people with a lot of wealth this is also for every product that was imported in our country right the government would be able to raise finances through this this was the one of the primary objectives another objective was to ensure that india should develop a capacity this was 30 years back now india is following a different strategy two pronged if you don't have it we will import it at a lower cost and if we have it we will ensure that the higher taxes higher custom duties are put here right so headphones earphones will become costlier both good example right concessional rate of custom duty which were being given on capital goods earlier they will not be given because we are creating those capital goods in our country good enough all right so similarly uh, methyl alcohol and astic acid have been uh, they, here it has been brought down right because these are critical chemicals required so it has been brought down at places and raised at certain other places all right they are going to help india's msmes this is what is in news so what are the reasons for this example is china china when china is dominating so much we can also compete saving our domestic industries vocal for local duty concessions all right calibrating the tariff all right and one good example of this is dli scheme this is a part of the third snapshot so how do you uh, look at the adec for this analysis deck this has been in news that is why we are covering it uh, quite a few times you can derive some data out of it for example which are the countries which are going we, we are going to compete against south korea taiwan china usa israel netherlands these countries happen to be those which manufacture more than 70 percent of uh, the chip industries and so this is the data we are going to compete against them and look at the kind of uh, their involvement in uh, in, in uh, innovation the percentage of gdp remember this we had spoken about south korea japan usa israel all of them see since their innovation is higher they have a better chance at building better products than us they are competing better than what we are doing so this is a not only data but analysis as well right we have to be putting in more funds in innovation examples also alongside right and then keywords right so this is the design linked incentive design linked incentive specific to a particular sector india wants to boost if you remember we had covered one feature on this electronics industry electronics industry and growth in electronics 400 billion dollar of uh, total production we are eyeing out of which 120 billion dollar only exports we are hardly exporting anything right now this is like uh, eight times that export that we are exporting right now it will happen through what through design linked incentive government says we will give you as much as 50 percent there is a cap on this 50 percent of the uh, of the total cost eligible to eligible participant oh, and it is capped to around uh, 15 crore yes 15 crore and then 30 percent of the capital expenditure they will pay so this is the design in linked incentive program right so this is it this is the news what are the prospects what are the challenges we have covered this previously but uh, to remind you essential inputs right this is a prospect essential input to the supply chain industry we have got decently skilled workforce we are working for the companies abroad but we must start working for ourselves now right who, who are we there are so many of us my sister herself works for the company intel and uh, uh, and it is a sad thing she doesn't work for cdac right why because skilled workforce gets more uh, salaries from uh, these global stalwarts skilled workforce is there but we must put them back to our indian industries right rapid growth trajectory we will have a rapid growth because we are only beginning the challenges are uh, many but we are beginning so there will be a faster growth boosting segment of the sector right so this is one of the prime segments which can actually be a part of supply chain right we will become an integral part of that supply chain just like taiwan has become or south korea has become all right so china would not do everything china has outsourced the you know the peripheral areas of work 
the core the core industry setup we are also not able to set up we are only speaking of the periphery but there is a specialization in the peripheral industries also india can gain the edge right there right boosting segments of the industry this is what it is what are the challenges we don't have a we we have no fabrication unit in our country right cost is very high to set up incubation period is high it is a capital incentive sector, selective application at only specific fields, geopolitics dependent, absolutely true. And infrastructure, capital investment, private, private participation, all of them are low here. All right. I have slided down, but since we didn't have a question on this this year, we, we, we could have used the data of all this in uh, many questions from paper two and paper three. But directly there was no question on chip industry expected in the coming times because this has been in use like anything all right you should have it in your mind this should be one of the sure short questions that you should be able to attempt right this day in history dedicated to wife of Bhim Rao Ambedkar Rama by Bhim Rao Ambedkar right she was uh, born on this particular day 1898 1898 February of 7th and uh, Mr. Ambedkar also gave a lot of credit to her, right? Every lady, there is some lady or the other behind the success of every gentleman and uh, he has given her the due credit that she deserved. This is why in news, this day in history. Can we utilize the fact like this somewhere? Yes, why not? Ethics paper. Ethics paper. Masculinity, femininity, the participation of females in the um, in the in you know their uh, their counterparts work right why not feature news for today is on interlinking of rivers interlinking of rivers right we will cover this aspect of uh, river uh, planning in details today in the feature news a very beautiful uh, plan that we have and the challenges also associated are not few you will understand this in totality a beautiful uh, feature for today image of the day is on uh, the perfectly preserved flowers right so this is from Myanmar and 9.9 .9 crore year old flower perfectly preserved in Myanmar right so they bloom at the feet of dinosaur and some flower in Africa have remained unchanged for millions of years right all right moving ahead to terms and concepts the first term in news very lately is the satras so what are these satras these are associated with the, the Brahmanic tradition, neo Vaishnavite tradition, right? Of these earlier times, we had uh, Sankar Dev from Assam, and these monastic traditions related to the Vaishnavites, they would be called as Satras. They are in use because their land, the land that would they would use for you know their social activities, religious preachings, they would be encroached, and this is why the government has now uh, you know instituted. A way to uh, to remove these encroachments right so during those times the 15 to 18 16th century times these were very proper popular as as tools for renaissance social and religious reforms in our country right Vaishnavit movement in Assam music dance and folk theater this reminds me of uh, the incidents of yesterday the application of what we study lies in our own surroundings one of the uh, event that happened yesterday was the passing away of Bharat Ratna Lata Mangeshkar ji, right? She passed away at the age of 92 and if you have noticed the flag, national flag flew half mast, it flew half mast. It was brought down from the top to half the levels and this is where it flew. This is a part of the national flag code that the flag will flow half mast, not for everybody, not for everybody, for the people who have been awarded Bharat Ratna, right? So, a quick, you know, practical awareness of what we study around, right? This is a fish, pola vata, fish, right? Uh, from the Indian coast, this is a part of, uh, pola vata is the local name given to these fishes. These fishes are part of the queen fishes, queen fishes. And uh, they were in news, this was a part of the Hindu, right? And uh, they are, they are getting into the threat of depletion in India. And some of these varieties of queen fishes have already gotten depleted in our country, right? So this is why in news lately. Polavata. The availability across Indian coastline is highly relished and good demand in the domestic market. India is notably one of the leading uh, countries for export of marine culture as well. 
first graphene innovation center graphene is also why is graphene important it is one of those uh, elements which is got least of one of the least of density they've got less of density they've got very high uh, conductivity conductivity and uh, uh, this can be very much processed in a country like india as well right so graphene very much popular and india has come up with the first graphene innovation center uh, in kerala this is going to be a very very empowering thing for uh, the chip designing industry in our country right chip designing so thinnest most electrically and thermally conductive flexible transparent and incredibly strong now certain certain exclusive minerals like this are uh, titanium right there are few more titanium is one of them z plus category security z plus it was in news because of certain political uh, you know updates from the country but we must know what is z what is y what is x what is z plus category very well explained right here in the image itself these are the levels of security provided to people of high importance by the government right i had explained earlier the security parameters for the prime minister right i had explained three levels there are two specific smaller levels around the prime minister so to understand this if the prime minister is at certain place there will be a spg special protection group spg specifically for the prime minister these people would be selected from the central armed police forces right and then there will be a personal security around them this both of these levels are those people in the civil uniform right civil coat and tie and pant and they have a gun and they have other you know important things for prime minister security these are two levels and the third level is by the national security guards black cat commandos the fourth level is by the uh, by crpf and the fifth level is by the state police this is for the prime minister but p and this is superior level of uh, security like spgs nsgs but if we have people like member of parliament or the ministers in the cabinet or state they are also given security depending on uh, the kind of vulnerability that they have and those levels are x y z z plus levels of security right so when we have x level of security only two armed personnel are given for the particular person no commandos only armed personnel for y level of security there will be shifts in which people will be operating 8 hour shift and uh, uh, so 11 personnel including one or two commandos are given commandos and uh, some mobile security is also given when people are on move they will be given more security right this is y level in z in z level of security more personnel are, are given right so people are also given uh, the bulletproof vehicles there will be a pilot vehicle ahead of them so these are the kind of security levels right just for awareness you must know x y y plus z and z plus right and imagine for a z plus level of security 55 personals are given including 10 plus commandos working in three shifts right 55 divided by 3 10 personal for mobile security and rest static 10 personal for mobile security so 10 into uh yeah yeah 10 so this is the kind of resources we invest for the cabinet ministers members of the parliament and uh, various other people who are under threat all right all right what is the question here all right so anonymous says vacuum quality still not achieved as per acer report outcome based learning lacking all right puja says sir tariff means taxes yes yes taxation ashish what is this acetic acid i think i will also have to study this i will i will get back on this netra nightingale of india absolutely Sir, your favorite Lata Mangeshkar song. I've been hearing her songs in radio since last two days. And in fact, Aaj Fir Zine Ki Tamanna Hai. That is one of my favorites. What is yours? Ashish says, wasn't the Nightingale of India Sarojini Naidu? <laughs> yes, that is true, Ashish. Yeah, Sarojini Naidu. Absolutely correct. Space Race. Outlining space strategies, right? So this is a very, very beautiful editorial from ORF. They talk about the kind of space races, especially defense oriented happening around the world right now. UK has released a defense space strategy. 
before this china had upgraded and released its defense uh, space strategy a uh, space strategy itself usa also had released one russia has one india also has something on the similar lines now these are the countries uk and india are the entrants new entrants but china russia and usa are big players in the space domain what they do is that they not only set up technologies they set up dual purpose technologies dual use technologies simple example is a rocket itself a rocket can be used to not only launch a satellite from earth to a space station a rocket can also be used to transfer weapon from one place to another yeah right absolutely so th this is a dual use technology what these people are doing right now clearly clearly doing is that they are using these technologies to to in quotes to preserve their space to preserve to preserve their space entities on the other hand they, they on one hand they say that they will be preserving their space entities like clearing the debris clearing the debris in lower earth or middle earth or orbit right but this clearing the debris will also encapsulate or can possibly encapsulate damaging the other satellite as well so this is a dual use technology not only rocket but clearing the debris itself similarly when they have uh, uh, cyber capabilities right cyber capabilities a sat test anti satellite test cyber capabilities to destroy their own you know, satellites in space can they not destroy other satellite yes they can do that and these countries have clearly developed these kind of strategies right china's military strategy is nothing china's civil strategy i'm sorry civil strategy is part of nothing but a part of military strategy itself usa has a clear defined policy for military and so has got uh, so has russia now uk and india also have these kind of policies but this game is going to be completely competitive where these three countries have taken the advantage for example electronic and cyber warfare technologies directed energy weapons co orbital satellites direct ascent missiles so co orbital satellites are those in which in the same orbit there are two satellites and one of them could be could be used to repair a satellite could be used to clear the debris in this particular orbit but it is not necessary that all these satellites in this orbit will be of china china can you can use this satellite or this device Two orbital device to threaten another satellite. Right? This something similar just happened a few uh, weeks back when Elon Musk Starlink satellite. Uh, it was almost on the verge of colliding with a Chinese satellite, and Chinese were not happy with this. Right? They had to make some evasive maneuvers. All right. So this is completely devastating to the opponent if the opponent does not have that level of technology. What the countries are doing right now is navigating. resource mapping gis based uh, data collection but along with that they are also able to gather intelligence and surveillance see as simple so this is more of defense strategy in the space weaponization of space not accounted for and uh, so this is an update opinion updated on uh, various other grounds you should update this update where we have spoken of the space race we have spoken about space race many times update this uh, article at that particular place how to create a better power distribution network now government every every budget government needs to mandatorily pass on some finances in the power domain why because because in this supply chain power distribution companies are not able to handle the finances well they are directly associated with the, the uh, uh, let me draw that particular figure there are four or five entities here right power generation companies power transmission companies power distribution companies and then government and then people power distribution companies should be directly linked to people right pricing should be directly linked but there is a political association between the government itself populist demands ensure that the uh, the power distribution do not get the right tariff for their power so what the government says indirectly to power distribution company is that you keep the tariffs low it is the it is the uh, election year right now and since they keep tariffs low they do not receive per, uh, the you know the actual cost they cannot they cannot even enforce people to provide them uh, the finances at the right time they get into deficits and there is deficit of uh, 1 lakh rupee 1 lakh crores plus overall in power distribution companies if they are under under this deficit they will not be able to provide finances to power transmission and power generation companies 
see most of these many of these power generation companies and power transmission companies they have been privatized or they are autonomous but power distribution companies largely lie in state governments field see further politicization so government comes up with scheme every year by which they give some finances to these distribution companies so that they are able to pay to their employees right so that they are able to pay to the generation companies otherwise these generation companies will stop giving them uh, uh, the uh, electricity itself right and so will the transmission companies so government keeps on coming with these kind of measures for multiple things one of them is is uh, you know regular work the second one is maintenance maintenance purpose maintaining efficiency in uh, the transmission increasing the uh, uh, prepaid connections prepaid connections and providing the metered connections metered connections so this is why these schemes run and largely largely the schema has been similar the names have changed for the schemes for power distribution companies but the schema has largely remained the same this is what the editorial says now this revamped distribution sector reform schemes this is also of the similar kind right now to enable rdss to play significant role it is important that stakeholders like distribution companies central state governments agencies play an active role right but then this is a passive role only finances are provided it is a passive role right now and this is the reason that the government very soon is going to introduce a bill in the parliament this will bill will be to privatize to privatize the power distribution companies the state government largely led power distribution companies and there will also be uh, an option amongst all of us many of us in urban areas uh, the option will be to to be able to pick up who we take our power from or purchase our power from right the one who is more efficient the one who is providing power at more competitive rates right now we have only one company the third editorial for today is on uh, regulatory regimes in doing biz business digital business now this is about online media agencies if you remember an amendment was made the last year in the it act and it said that the online media companies online media companies providing news right these must be regulated and there will be three there should be three levels of regulation one is the self regulation the second one is i am repeating this the second one is the level of regulation amongst uh, all the online media companies just like on the lines of press Tr trust of india so a uh, level of regulation for all the companies together and the third one is government designated regulation right and when there are conflicts and then there will be cases and they will be solved later so three levels of regulation should be there but the editorial provides a very very visionary approach that is that self regulation is the key to all the regulation right more than 95% of regulations more than 95% of conflicts they are solved at the level of self regulation itself so if the government is going to create laws here laws at different levels it is fine but this is only going to further increase the comp complexities if the entity is self regulated well then uh, then there will be lesser conflicts in this domain more so more so because government norms change very slow right this they, they might change in one once in two years once in five years but the technology will keep changing very fast right so whatsapp with privacy features with the uh, uh, apps for uh, you know uh, uh, money monetization purposes increased usage of ads privacy networking private networks all of them if they are a part of uh, the self regulation of social media online content this becomes uh, you know these structures become the most critical because second and third level will be further complexity and further time consuming therefore uh, self regulation so this is what it presents today's case study is on women and uh, a beautiful work you know a beautiful case study for the women from the kutch region now this kutch region is the one which where uh, the salt is extracted right salt is extracted because of the saline uh, nature of the landscape and you know this this salt extraction business is is very very difficult for uh, humans survival right so the climate conditions are humid and uh, there is there is salt in the atmosphere this disturbs our uh, skin this disturbs our lungs this disturbs a lot of processes in the body and because of this because of this this has also hurt the uh, the life 
span of many people, individuals here. The females here are now being trained to switch their activities, their livelihood from uh, soil panning industry to solar industry. Because Kutch is another place where very very good amount of sunlight is available. Sunlight along with increased duration of sunlight and this can definitely be monetized. So this is a very good uh, uh, initiative, a great case study for rehabilitation of people indulge in those kind of activities which uh, are not healthy. See, so Kutch solar panels and solar pumps technicians, these are being developed in Kutch region. Right? Which is the Kutch region? So when you look at the map of uh, Gujarat, the upper you know, uh, protrusion is the Kutch, the lower one is Parashtra and then we have three other components of Gujarat, upper, lower, upper, middle and lower Gujarat. These are the plain areas. All right, and this is also bordering Pakistan. All right, so this area for sustainable region development, there's been a new initiative. This can be a good case study for you while looking at human resources development or changing of fields of job. Start thinking of two or three more similar kind of work, which is more good, which is better for sustainable development and which is against uh, unsustainable development. So one example of this is uh, Safai Karamchari. Right? How should they be rehabilitated? What should they be doing? You should start looking at those. Today's quote is, women like men should try to do the impossible and when they fail, their failure should be a challenge to others. Yes, everybody should be supportive of women development just like what is happening right here. Right? If you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares and we will quickly meet in the other video that is for the feature news on river interlinking. Let me see if there's something to ask. You both say agree, she was the Nightingale of India. Yes, sir, Rojni Naidu. Nitra says, yes, Ashi is because of achievements. All right. All right. So thank you for participation. If you like this initiative, uh, it will only develop further from now on. And I will see you quickly in the next initiative. That is the feature news for today. Thank you for watching.